Yo, what's up guys? Today we're going to be exploring the methods of old school Indian bodybuilders. How the hell did these guys look so damn good even before steroids were invented? Well, in this video, we're going to be taking a look at the exercises these guys use to develop their physiques. We'll also do a little bit of analysis from our modern lens to see which exercises still hold up today and which ones we can improve on. We're going to be looking at a book called Muscle Control and Barbell Exercise. This book was written in 1930 and if you look it up you can find the whole thing online. It was written by Mr. B.C. Ghosh and by Mr. K.C. Sen Gupta. Before we get into the exercises let me read you a couple bits of wisdom I found in the introduction of the book. Always try to coax and not force your muscles to grow. Excessive rapid exercise is harmful. Avoid overexertion and go ahead slowly and intelligently. A few repetitions correctly performed is of more benefit than any number done in a clumsy way. At least seven hours of sleep are necessary for a student of physical culture. Alcohol and other stimulants may produce apparent developments, but they are nerve poisons and weaken the system. Above all, try to cultivate willpower. We have heard many enthusiasts murmuring for proper clothing, well-equipped gymnasium, and so on, and attributing their failures to want of these things. Let us tell these friends of ours that no station in life is a bar to physical culture. Of course, a man may make better progress by working under pleasant conditions. But most of the failures are due to the fact that too much attention is paid to getting those pleasant conditions, and too little to the method of work. There were more, but those were my favorites, and the ones which I still think are excellent advice to this day. So basically, they are telling us to exercise with good form and a high level of control, get lots of sleep, stay away from drugs, and don't let a lack of equipment hold you back. All right, let's get into the exercises. So this first one is a barbell bicep curl. Funnily enough, in the photo, they are not using the form that they recommend. They say to curl the barbell and to bring it up to shoulder level, keeping your upper arms fixed and pressed against the lats, which is exactly how we would perform a curl today. But in the photo, you can see Mr. Gosh bringing his elbow way too high and actually using his shoulders rather than the biceps. Come on, Mr. Gosh, man, you gotta stop ego lifting. All right, I'm just kidding, but I do find it kind of amusing that the very first exercise they show is a curl. I guess guys being obsessed with their biceps is nothing new, eh? They do this exercise in sets of 10 reps. All right, let's move on to the second exercise. This is a behind the neck press. An overhead press variation which is not very common today due to the mobility requirements, but it's still a perfectly valid exercise if you are able to perform it pain-free and load it properly. They recommend starting with 40 pounds and doing sets of 10 reps. The third exercise is a reverse curl, which this time is done properly in the photo. The instructions are the same as with the curl, except this time you are inverting your grip on the barbell. This is definitely very much a legit exercise and many people still do it to this day. The fourth exercise is this standing behind the back barbell tricep extension. I've actually never seen anyone do this exercise before and with good reason. I think we have figured out some much better tricep exercises than this one. This looks to be quite uncomfortable and also doesn't look to have a great resistance profile for the triceps. It's kind of similar to the much hated tricep kickback exercise. The fifth exercise is basically a stiff leg pendlay row. Nowadays people do this exercise with slightly bent legs since it allows them to get their back in a much safer position rather than the highly curved spine we see in these photos. They recommend doing 20 reps on this one and starting with just 40 pounds. So I suppose they're keeping it very light and doing high reps. But yeah, nowadays you have people doing this exercise quite a bit differently. Now in the sixth exercise, we actually find a mistake in the book. 
and it explains why they were seemingly curling with bad form in the first exercise. Here they say to raise the barbell to your shoulder level, keeping your arms always separated from your body, which obviously describes the photo in the first description because in this photo we have a textbook curl where the upper arm stays locked in place. So it all makes sense now, Mr. Gosh wasn't actually ego lifting. These guys just need to fire their editor. All right, the seventh exercise, I love to see this one. We have a wrist curl. So they hold the bar the same as they would for a reverse curl, but instead of bringing the bar up to the shoulders, they are pushing it inward by bending the wrist and contracting the forearm. Definitely a great exercise. For the eighth exercise, this one is quite interesting. It's almost like a pullover, but they're lying on the floor and taking the barbell from straight overhead to straight below onto the legs, while keeping the arms fully stretched the entire time. They also inhale at the bottom and top of the rep and hold their breath while the bar is moving. They say this develops the chest muscles and the rib cage. Very interesting and not something you see nowadays. I would prefer doing pullovers for the stretch and probably just a standard bench press for the chest development. The ninth exercise is a weighted sit up. They only do this one in sets of five reps. On the bottom, they exhale as much air as they can and they breathe at the top. They also squeeze and concentrate their minds on the ab muscles the entire time. Definitely a legit exercise, though personally I would do more than five reps when working the abs. The 10th exercise is also one I've never seen before. They are in a wrestler's bridge position with their head on a pillow and basically doing a bench press. They call this a neck exercise and yeah, the neck is definitely getting some work by stabilizing the body, but really the weight is being moved by the chest, triceps, and delts, same as a normal bench press. This is another one I definitely wouldn't recommend doing since I think we have much better options nowadays. For the 11th exercise, we have a pretty standard back squat in the description, but they also offer a variation here where you raise your heel and stand on your toes in order to involve the calf muscles more as well. Obviously, the standard back squat is an excellent exercise. I just don't know about this variation where you go on your toes. I think it would be safer and more effective to do calf raises separately to your standard squats rather than trying to combine the two. But again, here they are using light weights and high reps, so I think that's how they get away with it. The final two exercises are very interesting as well. They load the plates on only one side of the barbell and do curls and reverse curls using this configuration. Basically, they are kind of making the barbell into a dumbbell. This is the first time I'm seeing this sort of thing. I've never tried it myself, but I don't see why it wouldn't work. They say this exercise will make your arms flat and thick. Not sure what they mean by flat, but I'll definitely take the thick part. And yeah, that's it. Those are all the exercises we have in this book. The entire second half of the book is dedicated to muscle control and posing, which I'm happy to cover in another video if anyone is interested. So what can we learn from this video? Well, for me, it's clear to see that a barbell and some dedication is really all you need to develop a great physique. Could these guys have done better? Yes. Should you copy all their exercises? No, probably not. But you also don't need a fancy multi-million dollar facility with dozens of different machines and a library full of peer-reviewed meta-analyses just to get a great body. At the end of the day, hard work, consistency, and dedication is more important than any of that. And you definitely do not need steroids. They didn't even exist when this book was written, so all these guys are 100% natural. Seriously, if they could get this level of physique naturally with such basic knowledge and equipment, why can't we do so much more today? I believe we can, and that's what I'm going to prove on this channel over the coming years. And let me just address some of the comments because every time I talk about pre-steroid era bodybuilders, I get the same four stupid comments over and over. Oh, but testosterone levels were way higher back then. Oh, but these guys had amazing genetics. Oh, but they only look like that because they're so short. Oh, but steroids existed way earlier and these guys were all juiced up already. 
These are all such pathetic excuses. You're really going to try to tell me that some dude with a metal rod a hundred years ago had a much easier time bodybuilding than you? Come on, man. Stop wasting time writing these stupid comments and go train instead. All right, guys, that's all for today's video. If you enjoyed it, please give me a thumbs up and check out my physique highlight playlist for more old school natty motivation.